Hey everyone, my name is Patrick and I'm the training manager here at OneLogin. And today I'm going to show you how to set up provisioning for Syncplicity in OneLogin. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is click on Login. And just notice at the top of my screen, I have users, apps, devices, activity, settings. And that's because I'm the account owner. Now you would also have all of these tabs if you were a super user, but you wouldn't be able to do some things that an account owner can do. All right, so what I'm gonna do is head up to apps and then company apps. And I'm going to click on Syncplicity and head on over to the configuration tab. And if you recall in the previous Simplicity video, we added our one login trainingsimplicitycom custom domain in order to set up single sign-on. So now what we need to do is set up that API connection so we can start provisioning to Simplicity. So I'm gonna head over to Simplicity now and create an application token that I can paste in here. All right, here we are in Simplicity. I went to account and then the account sub tab. One thing to note, just as I am an admin and an account owner in one login, I am also the admin and account owner in Simplicity. So here in Simplicity, you can see that I can create an application token. So I'm going to click on create and I'm going to copy this application token. You can highlight it and select Command C or Control C depending on the kind of computer you're using. And at this point, what I'm going to do is head on up to the admin panel and I'm gonna show you the group that I'm going to provision my users to. Now, Simplicity also allows you to provision to roles, which is going to be you know, whether or not you're an admin, a super admin, or, you know, a regular user. But we're not going to do that in this video. The concepts are the exact same. You just choose what you want to provision to. You can set a default value if you'd like, and I'll go over that in just a moment. And as you can see, we have the employee guides group and one member in the employee guides group. So what I'm going to do now is head back to one login, paste in my access token, and start the provisioning process. All right, here we are back in one login. So the first thing I'm gonna do is paste in my application token here. And I'm going to select save. And then I'll head back to the configuration tab and enable the API. Enabled, there we go. Now I'm gonna head on over to the provisioning tab. First thing I'm gonna do is enable provisioning. So check the box. All right, let's chat about these three options here. So create, delete, and update user. This is something you're gonna see in all the applications that we can provision to. And it allows you to create tasks that you have to approve in order to create, delete, or update users. This is a great way to test and ensure that you are creating, deleting, and updating the right users. And I'm going to use this at first to make sure I'm doing the right things. Next, we need to choose when users are deleted in one login, what we should do in Simplicity. I'm going to choose to delete those users in Simplicity when we delete them in one login. And I'm going to refresh entitlements. Entitlements brings over those things that I can provision to specific to the app. So in our case, it would be bringing over the group that I can provision to, the employee guides group. So I'm gonna click on save now. And I'm gonna head on over to the parameters tab. So on the parameters tab, we have groups additionally and roles. In the last video, I chatted with you about making sure that the user ID and the email matched up so that you could use single sign on to sign in. With provisioning enabled, we'd be able to change the email address in one login, which would then update the user ID in Simplicity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the groups value here, and I'm gonna click where it says no value. That's because we don't have a default. And see here, we can set a default if we want to. So I could move this over to the selected values column, and that would make sure that everybody had access to the employee guides group in Simplicity. Now, I'm not going to do that. And the reason why is because, you know, I think the best way to approach provisioning and really access in general is to lock things down and slowly open them up depending on criteria that you set. And so what I'm going to do is scroll down now ensure that I have the ability to provision this entitlement. So you have to check this flag to include in user provisioning. And I'm going to select save. And instead of assigning just a default to everyone, I'm going to go to the rules tab 
and I'm going to create a new rule that says based off of criteria I set, I want to provision users, specific users, to this group. So I'm going to call this the employee guides group rule. Short and sweet, right? Um, and then I'm going to add some criteria. So I'm going to click on the plus for the condition and uh, oh, added to by accident. And I'm going to say for the condition, I'm going to use department. And I'm going to say if your department contains the words or the word, the acronym rather, HR, then I'm going to set your group in simplicity to employee guides. And so the thought here is that the employee guides group has all of the new hire information. Maybe it has specific information, only draft materials maybe for that content. And I want to make sure that it's controlled by my HR department. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that anybody in the department HR has access to this group and nobody else. And maybe this is a, a staging group. Maybe I have another group that I use in simplicity where I have that fresh content that has been sort of vetted and is ready for employees. Regardless of what your scenario is, just understanding the concept that I'm using criteria to provision specific users to this group is the most important thing. And so what I'm gonna do now is click on Save. And remember, we talked about roles too. So if I wanted to, I could also create a, uh, a condition and an action to set the role of users. So I could say, you know, I could provision everyone as a normal user, and then I could create another rule that said, well, based off of this criteria, I'm going to change you to a, um, let's see, an administrator or a support admin. So the, the concepts are the same in terms of how we use criteria and provision entitlements. So I'm just going to stick with groups. And at this point, I'm going to click on Save. And anytime you create or update a mapping, whether it's a rule, which is an app-specific provisioning mapping, or just a mapping, you need to reapply them. So for the rules, you need to go under the application and then go to more actions and reapply provisioning mapping. So I'm going to click on that. It says mappings are being reapplied. So I'll select OK. 